ever pitch a project and it's like so close to amazing you can almost taste it. But then right when you get to the good stuff, the ROI, the payback periods, you see their eyes glaze over like you just pulled out the world's most boring spreadsheet. Ugh, the worst feeling. The worst. So today, that's why we're diving into business case development. Yeah. This guide's not just about making a business case. It's about crafting an argument. The kind that doesn't just get noticed. It gets that enthusiastic green light. Right. You want them to be excited. Exactly. And get this. It's not all spreadsheets and numbers. This guy digs into the psychology, like how to navigate those office politics ethically, of course, yeah. and even the power of emotion to win people over. Who knew? Well, you got to have a good story, right? It can't all be numbers. Totally. Okay. So we're not just talking about getting a yes here. We're yeah. talking about becoming the go-to person in the room, the one with the ideas people get behind. That's the dream. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. This guide, it really reframes what a business case is. You know, it's not just about here's why you should spend money. It's like a roadmap for success. Roadmap. I like that. Tell me more. So think of it this way. A good business case, a robust one like this guide talks about, it does two things. One, convinces those decision makers, the ones with the power, that your project is worth the investment. Like ironclad, can't argue with it kind of thing. Bulletproof. Right. But just as important, it's a living document, like a guide, even after the pitch, to track the project and actually prove its value long term. So you set those benchmarks early. So it's not just about getting to yes. It's about proving them right for saying yes way down the line. Clever. Right. That's where your NPV, ROI, all those financial metrics, that's the language the executives speak. OK, before we go too far, can you break those down for me and anyone listening who might not have them memorized? Absolutely. Net present value. That's NPV magic. Like you're buying a magical money tree, right? NPV tells you if that tree is going to make enough golden apples, meaning profits, to be worth more than what you paid for it, even after, you know, a bad season or whatever. OK, I already like this explanation better than whatever my professor was trying to teach me. Right. Got to make it real world. Then there's ROI, your return on investment. Classic. Percentage you aim to make on what you put in. Lemonade stand. You invest X amount. ROI tells you how much more you make from selling that lemonade. Love the lemonade stand analogy. Classic. And payback period, that's simply how long till you earn back what you put in. Yeah. Exactly. Shorter the payback, the faster you're seeing those profits roll in. More appealing, usually. Like getting your money back before your lemonade stand gets rained out, right? Makes sense. But there's this other thing in the guide caught my eye. The emotional aspect of all this. Like, that's not something you usually hear in the finance world. What's the deal? It's brilliant, honestly. The guide says there are three core parts to being persuasive. The rational, the political, and, yep, the emotional. Okay, break it down for me. Rational, that's yeah. your hard data, the numbers, the stuff we just talked about. Foundation of the argument. Got it. So what's the political side? That's where you're connecting your project to the bigger picture of your company, right? What are the higher-ups focused on? What keeps your CEO up at night? You got to align your project with those big goals. Basically saying, this isn't just a good idea. It solves your problems. Ah, so it's strategic. Showing you get the whole picture, not just your little corner of it. Yeah. I can see how that's persuasive. Exactly. But here's the magic, the emotional side crafting a story, you know, painting a picture of how awesome the future will be because of your project. This goes beyond just the money. It's about the impact on customers, the team, maybe even the whole world if you're feeling ambitious. You're right. I've been guilty of getting stuck in the numbers before. But you got to sell the vision. Get people excited. Precisely. And don't forget, this guide also talks about how a good business case, it's not just good for the project, it's good for your career too, shows you're a strategic thinker, a problem solver, someone who gets it done. Okay, now that's motivating. Yeah. But how do we put this into action? The guide mentions four parts to actually analyzing everything. What are those? All right, let's dive in. First up, financial analysis. This is where you figure out your company's financial health right now. Are they doing great? Just scraping by? Growing, shrinking, what's the deal? This sets the stage for everything else. So like before you even propose a solution, you got to know what problem they're facing or what opportunity they're missing out on. Like diagnosing a patient before you prescribe anything. Exactly. Next, business modeling. This is where you put on your future predicting hat. What are the different ways this could go? What if it goes amazing? What if it all goes wrong? Got to think about it all. Ooh, crystal ball time. Mm. This is where it gets kind of nerve wracking, though. A little bit, but the guide gives you tools to make those predictions more realistic. OK, feeling better already. You said four parts. What are the last two? This is where it all comes together. The top down business case and the bottoms up benefits case. Two sides of the same coin. OK, I'm intrigued. So top down, you're linking that financial analysis we talked about to the potential benefits of your awesome project. Focusing on strategy. Does this help us reach our big, ambitious goals? That's the question. Got it. Got to keep the big picture in mind. What about bottoms up? That's the details. What specific things will be better? How much better? In actual numbers. This is about being realistic, showing this isn't just some pie in the sky idea. It can actually work. So it's like having the map and the detailed directions. Mm -hmm. Need both to get where you're going. Exactly. Big vision meets actually making it happen. 
And speaking of connecting things, let's talk about this thing called the benefits matrix. Benefits matrix. Right. Okay, is this where it gets like really complicated? Because my brain's already working pretty hard over here. Not at all. Think of it as a sorting hat. But for all the good things your project can do, you're just deciding. For each one, is it about money or not? And can you actually measure it? Or is it more of a feeling? Okay, so financial benefits, that's pretty clear. More money, fewer costs. Mm -hmm. But the non-financial stuff, those are the trickier ones, right? Yeah, those are the ones you can't exactly slap a price tag on, but they matter. Happy customers, a team that's not burning out, a brand everyone loves. That's powerful stuff. Totally. But if you can't measure it, how do you even put it in a business case? Like trying to explain how valuable a good night's sleep is. Mm -hmm. You know it matters, but good luck putting it in the spreadsheet. And that's exactly it. The guide's very clear. Only those money-related benefits, the ones with numbers attached, those go in your financial model. The other stuff, the feel-good stuff, that's for your story. To get people on board emotionally, you know, it's got to resonate. So it's the difference between just showing someone the numbers versus telling them why those numbers matter. Exactly. And for those measurable benefits, the money makers, the guide has five categories. Super helpful for wrapping your head around it all. All right, hit me with those categories. I'm well, all about making this actionable. All right, first up, the one everyone loves, revenue enhancement. How do we bring in more money? New product that everyone's dying to buy. Tapping into a whole new market. Or even, how do we get our current customers to spend a little extra? Makes sense. More money coming in is always a good thing. What's next? Then there's cost reduction, which is about being smart. Can we streamline things, automate some tasks so we're not wasting time and money? Find a cheaper way to do what we already do. So less money going out. I like the sound of that. Give me more. Right along those lines, cost avoidance. This is being proactive, like packing an umbrella even if it's not raining yet. What can we do now to avoid expenses later? Okay, so not just saving money today, yeah. but preventing problems tomorrow. Gotcha. gotcha. That's yeah. three categories, right? What are the last two? You got it. Last two are for those big expenses. Capital expenditure is the fancy term. So first, capital reduction. Being clever with those big investments, like if you need new equipment or something, can you get the same result without spending a fortune? Smart. And the final category, the grand finale. Capital avoidance. Like cost avoidance, but supersized. Can we hit our goals without that huge upfront cost? Might take some extra brainstorming, but the payoff can be huge. Okay, so whether it's more revenue, streamlined costs, or being savvy investors, this guide's got a system for spotting every opportunity, like financial x-ray vision. Love it. But here's where a lot of business cases go wrong. It's not enough to just list these benefits. You gotta connect them to the company's actual financials. You know, yeah. those reports the finance team loves, we gotta speak their language. Show them the money, right. Make it real in their world. Precisely. Every benefit, gotta show how it impacts those financial statements. Your P&L, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Gotta back it up. So not just, hey, this new product's gonna make tons of cash. It's, this product will bring in an estimated X dollars in revenue, boosting our profit margin by Y percent, leading to Z dollars added to our cash flow. Specific. Exactly. That's where even good ideas fall flat. Big promises, but no connection to the reality of the numbers. Recipe for skepticism, and that's how you get your project rejected. Ouch, nobody wants that. So we've got our benefits, we've shown their impact, we're speaking finance. Are we ready to face the executives now? Almost. One more crucial step. Validation. It's yeah. like quality control before you release your masterpiece into the world. Validation. Is that like making sure the fonts look good in the presentation? Can't hurt, right? Presentation's important, sure. But this is bigger. It's about making damn sure your benefits, those numbers you crunched, that they're bulletproof. Based on real stuff, not just wishful thinking. Okay, so you don't want to be in the hot seat all confident, and then someone's like, ah, how'd you get that number? <laughs> Awkward. The worst. Validation is about mitigating risk. It's about getting everyone to agree, not just that your project is cool, but that your analysis is solid. You want them to trust your judgment. So how do we do that? Bring in a whole team of accountants to double check everything. Seems a bit intense. Way less dramatic, I promise. Go back to your sources. Double check those assumptions with the people who know your subject matter experts. Make sure your math is right. Get those, how'd you get that number questions out of the way before they even come up. So it's a gut check, but instead of just our gut, we're using real data and expert opinions. Okay, that makes me feel better already. Confidence is key, especially when you're facing down those execs. Speaking of confidence, the guide also talks about building a financial model. And I gotta be honest, that's where I start to get a little intimidated. I'm not exactly a spreadsheet wizard over here. Totally get it. But honestly, it's not as scary as it seems. This guide even gives you an Excel template you can use. It's like a pre-built foundation for your skyscraper. Okay, that does make me feel a little better. But even with a template, there's still a lot of financial stuff. You know, the jargon, the metrics. What do I really need to know to make this model believable? What are the execs actually looking for? Great question. There's a lot to cover there, so let's focus on the key stuff that makes those executives pay attention. First up, your discount rate, sometimes called the hurdle rate. It's basically the minimum return your company expects on any investment. Okay, so if their hurdle rate is, say, 10%, any project has got to show a return higher than that, or they won't even consider it, like needing to be tall enough to ride the roller coaster. Exactly. And once you've got your discount rate, you can figure out your net present value. That's NPV, remember? It tells you how much all those future cash flows are worth, but like, in today's dollars. 
That counts for the time value of money, all that. It's like having a financial time machine. Right. Then there's your ROI, your return on investment. We talked about that earlier. Higher ROI usually means a more interesting investment. And finally, there's the payback period. How long till they earn back that initial investment? Shorter payback is usually better, less risky for the company. Got it. Discount rate, NPV, ROI, payback period. We've got our key metrics down. What else do we need to really knock their socks off? Well, we've got the big metrics down, but this guide is full of advice. You know, It's like having a mentor in your pocket whispering executive secrets. What are some of those gold nuggets? One of the biggest. Start quantifying those benefits early. Don't wait till the last minute to slap some numbers together. The sooner you start, the more time you have to really refine your analysis. Make that case airtight. It's like, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> you wouldn't build a house from the roof down. So why do we treat business cases like an afterthought so often? It's easy to fall into that trap, but this guide helps you avoid it. Another tip, get those stakeholders involved early on. Don't build this thing in a vacuum. Share what you're thinking, even your doubts. The more they're on board from the start. The better, right. It's not about surprising them with a perfect presentation at the last second. It's about getting them invested in the process. Exactly. And here's one I love. Understand the business, not just the numbers. Ooh, I like yeah. that. It's like anyone can bring you a problem. You want the person who brings the solution, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's more like, don't just bring me the numbers, bring me what they mean. You got it. Anyone can make a spreadsheet. A good business case, it tells a story. Connects your project to the things those execs actually care about. You know, the future of the company, all that. Paint that picture they can get excited about. Yeah. So as we wrap up here, what's one final thought you want to leave folks with? Something to chew on as they tackle their own business cases. Throughout this whole guide, the big takeaway is understand the why, not just the what. Don't just show up with an idea and some impressive looking figures. You got to answer that deeper question. Why does this matter? How's it going to move the needle for the company, for the people involved? It's got to be about more than just the bottom line, right? Exactly. So here's my challenge for everyone listening. What's the story you're not telling yet? What's the deeper why that'll make your business case sing? Find that and you're golden. Love it. Great reminder that behind every successful project, there's that human element. You got to connect with people, get them as excited as you are. Do that. And that yes is just the beginning.